Welcome back. And as promised, Gautam Chaucharya, the Managing Director and Head of India Research at UBS Securities, joins us now from the sidelines of the UBS India Conference 2018. Good morning, Gautam. Good to have you with us. And thank you for finding time ahead of your conference. Uh, what's the overall mood? Are people grumbling about the fact that EPSs are again getting downgraded after the second quarter? Or are people cheerful that, uh, you know, now crude is in our favor, uh, the rupee depreciation will start uh, giving us some gains? What's the mood overall? So mood is still mixed, uh, Lata, uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, the, the reason being that uh, you're getting mixed signals uh, while the mood around the liquidity in non-bank financials is not as bad as it was a month back, but still still a worrisome amongst investors. Uh, crude is a big, big silver lining, which has helped uh, revive positive sentiment somewhat uh, for, for, for Indian, Indian investors. Uh, but we, I think the most global as well as local investors are also now looking forward uh, to what happens in December 11th when the three state elections come out. Now, at this stage from the conference, uh, what I can gather, and it's very early days, I haven't spoken to many investors attending the conference. But what I would look at this stage is also the number of uh, investors coming from outside India. And are we getting newer investors who are making their first India trip? So in both of these parameters, I think uh, the mood seems to be constructive on India. Uh, the number of people attending from outside India is still still quite good. Mm -hmm. In fact, higher than last year. And we're still getting first-time visitors. Okay. Gautam, hi. Good morning. Uh, just to extend that point uh, on elections, because we have the, uh, you know, Chhattisgarh elections today. So, uh, we are now in the in the zone. Uh, how, how important is that uh, from the near-term or medium-term uh, point of view? Uh, are foreign investors, uh, I mean, worried a bit about uh, the, the recent by-election polls and the, the recent mood change, or do you think uh, it will be taken in the stride? So yeah, absolutely, it's very, very critical for uh, Indian markets, uh, specifically for the next six, nine months, uh, medium to long term. Uh, it also depends on the new government formation, etc. But for the next six to nine months, this will be a very critical event. Uh, as we've been talking since the beginning of the year, the elections will start dominating the market narrative. Uh, for the first six months, first nine months of this year, uh, investors were ignoring the various kind of noises and signals coming in. But now they are starting to track it very, very closely. Uh, my sense is a lot of the global or most of the global investors are still hoping, believing in, pricing in that Mr. Modi comes back. Uh, on that narrative, there has been some concern building up locally amongst local investors. But the global investor base is still hoping and presuming Mr. Modi comes back. Uh, in, in case these uh, state election results gives a negative or adverse results into that outcome, uh, then obviously it will cause some worry amongst global investors. Okay. Gautam, hi. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Uh, the big talking point this morning is also how earnings growth targets have been scaled down uh, post this quarter. In fact, CLSA has scaled it down to just uh, a 10.5% nifty EPS growth for the full year. Have you scaled down your targets as well and what are you estimating now for this year and next? So I haven't changed the numbers since what I had from Jan 18 uh, for the last 10 months. And still now, I'm hoping for 13% growth for Nifty for fiscal year uh, 19. So no changes in that. Uh, that is uh, building in some mild recovery in the banking sector NPLs, not mm -hmm. a complete one. Uh, but that, that's the estimate right now, no changes in that. And based on that and the next year's forecast, uh, my Nifty target uh, base case remains 9,500 for March 19. Uh, and the upside downside suggests still an attractive risk reward. But the earnings cuts are not really a surprise. Uh, it's happened for the last six years. Uh, it's going to happen this year also. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I, is that making people a little worried about India? You know, for the first time uh, when we were having this Diwali chat, Akash Prakash said, if for three, four, five years in a row, we are bringing down the EPS forecast, is this just cyclical or is this structural? Are people asking such deeper questions? So people have raised these questions even earlier. So earnings cuts is not last three, four years, it's last six years phenomena. Uh, is this structural, cyclical? It's a tough one to debate. Uh, if you look at the reasons why uh, earnings have been cut, uh, a couple of interesting points historically. One, if you look at last five, six years, uh, literally every year the earnings cuts have been broad-based. It's not uh, driven by one or two big sectors. But each year there has been a couple of sectors which has been a bigger contribution. And those seem to be 
spe sector specific one off issues rather than the broader india macro debate or, or worry so i won't think that uh, uh, it's a structural thing uh, but yes structurally the investor community the analyst community needs to reset their expectations that india can grow earnings at 20% plus uh, unless and until we see gdp growing at 8 9% so as long as india's gdp growth rate is around 7 7.5% the more likely reasonable set of earnings estimates is more like uh, 10 to 15% range not 20% plus okay let's talk about a few sectors as well uh, gautam you, you know from your note uh, i can see that you are overweight on both uh, private banks and it within private banks uh, we have seen corporate banks starting to do really well icici and axis uh, while the erstwhile outperformers like kotak and hdfc bank indusind bank have seen a big correction uh, your thoughts on how to approach uh, the, this big sector so that's that i would say a lot of it is also near term tactical positioning and trading and taking profits etc but uh, our view is very simple uh, india had a very easy money environment for last 3 4 years locally Uh, which changed six months back in an easy money environment. Uh, the non-bank financial and wholesale funded uh, corporate and private banks uh, did better because the value of low-cost savings deposits was nothing. Uh, that environment has changed last six months. Uh, liquidity started tightening, and for the foreseeable future, it doesn't look like we'll have the easy money environment which we had for last three four years. In that environment, uh, the business in terms of growth and profitability. will shift away from these wholesale funded banks and non banks to banks which have a retail liability franchise mm. okay okay, okay very so interesting yeah. okay sorry go ahead no so that's on uh, the retail liability franchise banks but you know i'll come to sectors in a bit before that i also wanted your thoughts on the the mf flows that we got i mean it's sitting at oh, you know 7 8 month high almost at 15000 crores for the month of october of course it's backdated information but do you think it would buttress the market amidst all the volatility that we're seeing absolutely absolutely so if you look at last uh, you, you mentioned about earnings cuts so last 4 years we've seen earnings cuts but indian markets have done well uh, and two of the biggest drivers of that one has been mr modi's government and the reforms agenda and second also has been the strong local retail flows so we haven't seen uh, dramatic or significant foreign inflows Uh, so local flows is one of the key supporters of of lo local indian markets and this kind of flows will definitely be a big help for indian markets absolutely okay uh, well uh, what are the global investors telling you gautam with respect to the difference in valuations between dms and ems i think anuj was making the point some time back that uh, the gap between the two has reached its widest so is there now a a, a desire to take a serious look at ems so many of them are want to look at uh, em but i think for them to want to look at em uh, they also need to get more confidence about china uh, and they're still not sure about the trade war and and us dollar moves so x that uh, they de definitely want to look at em but again one of our global strategies has been making the point that if you look at em Uh, the em balance sheet is in far better shape than it was in say 12 13 but the earnings power uh, of em is not as strong as earlier up cycles so again a lot of investors uh, do acknowledge that but the valuation gap is definitely making a lot of investors interested i just wanted to ask you one thing about sectors uh, uh, i saw property uh, you uh, you think now they are cheap enough to buy so a couple of points there one is uh, which obviously they're cheap and and looks attractive but fundamentally two things there one is if you look at the listed property guys uh, they have done reasonably well over last 3 years in terms of earnings growth balance sheet cash flows uh, in one of the worst property cycles india has seen uh, and that uh, is something which can actually accentuate further uh, because of the tighter liquidity these these listed uh, bigger guys will gain shares much 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 more than they have over last 3 4 years so that makes them very attractive and secondly our, our top down macro view also is for the next big up cycle in, in india's economy you do need housing and property cycle to kick in uh, if we just keep hoping for private capex uh, that could prove more difficult uh, than what the market is looking at right now okay just one final question from my and then uh, gautam uh, crude is now at a 9 month low um would you buy any of these crude beneficiaries you know paint stocks um tire stocks aviation stocks so tactically yes uh, definitely uh, the, 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 these stocks and their near term earnings do reflect 
uh, how, how these crude prices move. But structurally, uh, it's, it's more a quarter or two here and there. It doesn't really matter so much for a lot of the company uh, sectors you mentioned. Yes, the uh, oil marketing companies could be bigger beneficiaries, but there, the, from the near-term perspective, election is on overhang. But that's one segment which is now becoming, uh, looking very interesting again. All right. Okay. Well, then we leave it there today. Thanks a lot for joining us. And, uh, of course, uh, all the best with your conference. Uh, that's uh, Gautam Chaucharya from UBS. Election, of course, still remains a bit of an overhang for the market. Manoj Mulitharan of Religious Securities is with us now. Manoj, good morning. So what are your top trades? Uh, good morning, Anuj. Uh, Anuj, uh, I guess we are looking at the index and we are looking at the bank Nifty precisely more than the Nifty because I guess uh, this is one index. Uh, at least in the last 7 to 8 trading session, we are seeing good open interest built up and it is being carried. And needless to say, even the components, uh, the private sector banks, uh, which contribute to more than 75-80% of your uh, bank Nifty, we are seeing good buying not only in the cash market but some long built up in the derivative as well. So buying bank nifty future somewhere close to 25,700 to 750 is what we recommend with a stop loss of 480 and we expecting uh, this distribution might come only closer to 26,400 or in the other way uh, the month end expiry which is your 29th number you can buy a 27,000 call option uh, I guess the closing is around 30 rupees so you buy it between 25 to 30 rupees and you'll have to hold it till the expiry the target is uh, 80 rupees in that uh, stock specific as you're saying uh, we like Apollo tires and we believe that there is a good, there, there might be a good surge which might come in there. That's a follow-up buying that we expect to come. Uh, there is a good VWAP concept uh, which has uh, been emerging into this stock. So 220 roughly is what we recommend buying that. Uh, let's say keep a stop loss of 204 and a weighted average price of 244 to 46 is where we might see some distribution. Followed with commission as well, uh, we would recommend buying that as well at uh, 780 with a stop loss 760 and target somewhere close to uh, 802 to 812 is what we're expecting on that. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Manoj, for joining us uh, with your trading strategies this morning. Have a good trading day and trading week as well. Uh, well, one stock that's been buzzing for some time now has been Gateway Distri Parks, uh, actually up 11% on Friday, and the year-to-date rise is 40% uh, for this stock. Uh, uh, well, uh, sorry, the year-to-date, it fell about 40%, and this 11% rise uh, was uh, quite a surprise. Sachin Bhanushali, the director and CEO of uh, Gateway Rail Freight, joins us on the phone line. Uh, Sachin, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, was there any announcement, something that we missed, that we saw this kind of a buzz in your stock? Uh, good morning, Lata. Uh, uh, there was no announcement which has taken place uh, during last, uh, uh, say, 10 days or so. But I guess uh, over a period of time, the counter has seen some amount of uh, uh, subdued uh, interest, uh, particularly after the uh, 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 NBFC uh, issue cropped up. But the, uh, uh, I think, uh, on the whole, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, counter has been uh, uh, trading at a very low level on account of uh, both the mid-cap issues which were there as well as uh, uh, nervousness in the market. The no. going forward... I yeah, uh, morning. Can you tell us a little bit about the business as well? I mean, the growth has slowed down quite a bit in the first half of the year, just a single-digit revenue growth. What's the outlook like for the second half? Yeah. Uh, hi, Sonia. Uh, good morning. Uh, the uh, uh, Going forward, we feel that the second half is going to be much more promising as compared to the uh, first half of the year. Uh, the reason for this being that the quarter third normally turns out to be uh, a good number uh, from uh, uh, international trade point of view. Uh, the uh, quarter third sees two major events, uh, the Christmas buying as well as the Diwali buying. Diwali buying results into imports, Christmas buying results into exports. So in both the CFS business as well as ICD business, we are see, seeing uh, uh, firmness both uh, in uh, demand in both the directions. Apart from that, we had experienced uh, in the rail company some uh, 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 issues with respect to mobility on the Mundra port to uh, NCR movement. Uh, to some extent, also Pipawa port to NCR movement mm -hmm. on account of work which was being done by railways. That also has kind of eased off. So overall, uh, yes. the operating cost also should improve during this period. Okay, so you would do better than this 41 crore EBITDA you did uh, in the first half? Uh, yeah, we we confident that we'll be able to do better than the first half EBITDA. And revenue uh, more better than 6%? That's right. The okay. revenue, uh, we are expecting the revenue growth to be of the order of almost two, double digits. All, All right, right. Yeah. We'll leave it at that, Sachin. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Uh, that's uh, uh, Gateway and uh, of course it saw a very big uh, jump on Friday.